It's a new quarter, so it's time for a new Kendra's card challenge, which is number 13. I'm very excited and honored because I joined the KCC design team. My name is Julia and I'm an enthusiastic card maker and paper crafter from Austria. Welcome to my channel, Julie's Kreativschatzkiste. This video is part of a giveaway hop in which all the KCC design team members present the single sketches of Kendra's card challenge number 13. And I will present you the sketch number 14, which you see here on the screen. For my sketch I'm featuring the Digital Sentiment Printables Love Always bundle from Polka Doodles, which is one of the super sponsors of Kendra's card challenge. I will give you more details about the challenge and about the hop, as well as about all the possibilities to win while I'm crafting on my card. The Love Always bundle contains a lot of sentiments in the context of love and Valentine's Day. I decided to make a background out of this many sentiments. And that is actually quite easy. I started in Keynote on my Apple MacBook, but you can also do that in PowerPoint or many other design programs. I inserted a rectangle into my presentation, which is exactly the size of the panel given in the sketch. So the format is 4 inches by 5 and a quarter inches. This rectangle just serves for my orientation that I know how big my word cloud should be. I then drop the single sentiments out of this bundle into my presentation and I resize them, rotate them and put them on a place where I think they fit well. If you're new to Kendra's card challenge, this is a quarterly challenge where each quarter Kendra provides you with a free PDF printable where she gives you 15 sketches of cards with detailed instructions which can be made out of six sheets of six by six inch patterned paper. In the first video of this hop, Kendra provides you with all the details and you find the link to the free PDF printable in the description box of this video. Anyway, you can win great prizes if you join the challenge. All you have to do is make a photo of all the 15 cards you made out of the challenge and post it on the Kendra's Card Challenge Facebook group. You can enter each month once, so three times per challenge. The current challenge, KCC 13, runs from January 1st until March 31st. I hope you enter the challenge because it's fun and you get 15 unique great cards out of it. And besides the possibilities to win with Kendra's card challenge itself, this video is part of a giveaway hop where you can also win a prize. For your chance to win that prize, there's a link in my description box to a form which you have to fill out. You can fill out this form once for each stop of this giveaway hop. Each video in the giveaway hop will give you a secret passphrase which you have to enter in the form. My passphrase is Spellbinders. Spellbinders is a new sponsor of our challenges. The deadline for the giveaway hop and for submitting all the forms is January the 12th. In order to see all the videos included in this giveaway hop, use the hashtag KCC13, which is also included in the title of this video. If this hashtag in the title doesn't work, all the stops of the giveaway and the links are also included in my description box. The winner will be randomly chosen and announced on the Cards by Kendra YouTube channel under the Community tab. Back to my card. I have finished my word cloud and I duplicate it and make it a little smaller just to be on the safe side and then to have different possibilities at hand. I deleted the background color of the rectangles but I left the black outline to make the cutting out of my panels easier. In order to make sure that my panel is exactly the same size when I print it out, I first export my file as a PNG, which is export as a pictures and then choose the PNG format. And then I open this file and print it. And in the printer dialog, you can choose the size of the page and I choose exactly 100%. For the printout, I didn't use copy paper, but rather paper that is a little bit heavier. I then cut out my panels exactly to the size I want them which is the size given in the sketch 14, which is four by five and a quarter inches. I also have to mention that I used a laser printer for printing out my sheet because I want to use decofoil to put a shine on my sentiments. If you don't have a laser printer or you don't want to use the decofoil, you can just use any normal inkjet printer and use any color which fits to your card for printing out the paper. Anyway, I used the decofoil in the color aqua, which I really like. I cut it to size to fit my panel and then I put the silver side of the foil down on my sentiment. These two together I put within a sleeve of normal copy paper and I send it through my laminator which is set to medium heat. When I take off the foil it looks really gorgeous 
and it has a great shine to it. So now most of our preparations are finished. We just need to cut out all the other layers and panels for the sketch number 14. And then we can put our card together already. This is a great advantage of Canvas Card Challenge. You can either use the 6x6 pattern paper sheets to make all the 15 cards, or you can use and choose a single sketch because all the instructions and measurements for the single cards are given as well in the PDF. This is what I'm doing now with my sketch number 14. So first I put down my background panel, which is exactly the size of the card, so 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half. On top of that I put my shiny word cloud sentiment panel, which is the size 4 by 5 and a quarter. For the diagonal strips which are included in the sketch, I chose a pink pinkish paper, which also fits to the aqua color of my sentiments, in order to make the card feeling a little bit more like Valentine's Day. For the matting of the stripes I used the turquoise paper from the background again. The focal point of the card is a 2 inch circle, which is then matted by a circle with a decorative edge. For the circle, I took my second panel, which I also made from aqua color, and I chose a section where the words and sentiments could be read entirely. Here I chose the love and your love lifts me up, which are really good sentiments for a Valentine's Day card. With the decorative matting it fits perfectly on my card, I think. So then I prepared the strips with the matting layers. I actually cut them a little bit bigger than the measurements given in the sketch as I had the paper anyway and I had a little bit more flexibility this way. For gluing down the diagonal strips I used my tape roller. I put down the first one and then I used my ruler to get the strips parallel. You do not have to use a ruler of course, but it made my life quite easy to have equal distance between the strips. The strips on the sketch actually do not extend to the matting layer, that is why I used my ruler again to make marks where the strips should end and that way I had it easy to cut them down to size. Then there was only one step left, which is to put the focal point on the cards. For this I used foam tape to give the card a little dimension. As embellishment for the card I used some turquoise drops. I used them to make dots on the strips, which fit perfectly to the pattern. Unfortunately you can see that very well in the video. And finally I used Stickle Stardust to add some more glitter into my card. So that was my card today with sketch number 14 from Kendra's card challenge number 13. I really hope you like my card and consider su subscribing to my YouTube channel or leaving me a comment and a like. Don't forget to fill in the form for your chance to win a prize in this giveaway hop. The link is in my description box and the passphrase for my video is Spellbinders. Enjoy the rest of the hop! And see you soon. Servus.